video, we're going to look at the Bertrand Nash equilibrium. So this is another model that goes back to, you know, 19th century France, uh, along with Cournot, um, and looks basically at the same problem that Cournot looked at, but comes to a very different uh, conclusion. And so we'll, we'll think about that. So basically Bertrand, who's writing, you know, almost 50 years after Cournot says, People, firms don't choose quantity. They don't choose how much they're producing. They choose price and then they compete on price. Um, and, you know, Fisher agreed. They said, yeah, that seems like a more natural choice variable. And so we set up the same problem as Cournot. We have the same inverse demand function, P equals A minus BQ. Um, but we're interested in um, price. And so we're going to use the regular demand function. So we have to solve for Q, right? So we just uh, move, you know, the Q over, we get A minus P over B. So again, symmetric costs, homogeneous goods, everything else is the same. And so let's see what happens. So again, we're going to treat this as a game, right? A Nash equilibrium, we're going to find the Nash equilibrium, um, even though that's not the way Bertrand uh, thought of it necessarily. We've got two firms, uh, they have to choose some sort of price and payoffs are profits. So P times Q minus C times Q and information is complete. Now, we can't solve it the same way. And, and really that is because we're making uh, a fairly important assumption. And the important assumption is that consumers are always going to purchase from the cheapest seller. And so I think that makes sense if you think about, you know, uh, consumers going to a market and the two firms are next to each other and they say, okay, the products are the same. Uh, what's the price? And so whichever price is lower, that's who you're going to choose from. If the prices are the same, then we assume, I think fairly realistically, that 50% of consumers will go to one, 50% of consumers will go to the other. So that gives us kind of a funky demand curve because if your price is higher than your competitor's price, you're going to sell zero. If your price is lower than your competitor's price, you're going to sell the entire uh, market demand, right? Which is A minus P over B. And then if your price is the same as your competitor's price, you're going to sell half of that. So A minus P over 2B. So this is the big uh, assumption that is going to drive our results. But it also means that we have a discontinuous demand curve, right? So our demand curve is zero until we get to our competitor's price. Then we have this one spot where it's equal to our competitor's price and we sell uh, half the market demand. And then if it's below the competitor's price, we just sell the market demand, right? Um, and that means that because our demand curve is discontinuous, our profit function is also discontinuous, right? So uh, we have, you know, a regular profit until we, our price gets too high and then uh, our profit is zero because we don't sell any. So how are we going to solve this? Well, it's actually not that hard to solve, and it really becomes not that dissimilar to, say, a prisoner's type dilemma um, type of game. Um, and the idea is that, all right, well, let's just think of two prices, right? So if you can choose between, say, $10 and $9.99, well, if we both choose... $10, then we split the market. But if you choose $10 and I choose $9.99, then I get the entire market. And so I get, you know, all of those profits and you get zero. And similarly, if I choose $10 and you choose $9.99, then I sell zero, I get zero profits and you get all of the profits. And so there's an incentive to undercut your uh, competitor's price until you get to marginal cost, right? So at marginal cost, at C, you both earn zero profits, but if you cut the price at all, sure, you're going to sell all of the market demand, but you're going to have negative profits because now you're selling at a price less than marginal cost. And so negative is worse than zero. And so our unique Nash equilibrium here is where prices are the same and they're both equal to marginal cost. Well, that is exactly the perfect, uh, perfectly competitive outcome, right? That's what we had in our perfect competition model. Price equals marginal cost, P equals C, profit equals zero, and total quantity equals A minus C over B. And so Bertrand said, hey, look at this. We don't need to have lots of firms to get to perfect competition. We just need to have two firms that are competing based on price. 
Um, and it doesn't matter whether we have two firms or five firms or 10 firms or 100 firms, we, we get the same result no matter what. And so this is called the, the Bertrand paradox. And I think it's a paradox in some ways um, because firms do often compete on price, but the fact is that the empirical evidence is that the fewer firms there are in a market, the higher the price is, the higher the profits are. And so that looks a lot more like Corneau uh, than Bertrand. Now, one of the things we saw in uh, Corneau is that even when one firm has a cost advantage, both firms can still end up producing as long as the cost advantage isn't too large. Um, in this case, we won't have that example, right? So if firm one has the cost advantage, then the, the same Nash equilibrium logic holds until you get to firm two's marginal cost, C2. And now firm one says, ah, I can cut my price a little bit below C2, which is still above my marginal cost. Firm two won't produce anything, and I basically get all of the profits. Um, but my uh, price, it's not the monopoly price, right? It's just a price a little bit below uh, C2. And so there's only one seller, um, but you can't quite charge the monopoly price, right? Because if you try to charge the monopoly price, firm two is going to enter back into the market. So what do firms do? I mean, I think firms are caught in this problem a lot, right? And so what a firm wants to do really is to try to differentiate its products. And that's what we see in a lot of markets that would otherwise probably be uh, like Bertrand, where price equals marginal cost and economic profits are zero. Um, and so the model with product differentiation gets a little more complicated. Um, we use D to um, sort of differentiate. Uh, and we can see that if we solve for the equilibrium, you know, we get these sort of complicated price, quantity, and profit formulas. But D basically means, all right, if D equals zero, the products are unrelated, we get a monopoly. Um, and so you can see like price, if D equals zero, we get A plus C over two, that's the monopoly price. Um, whereas when products are the same, they're homogenous, we get D equals one. And in that case, we get um, the regular Bertrand perfect competition outcome, right? So this would be A minus A, so that's uh, zero. We get C over one or just C for price. Um, and similarly, we get A minus C, um, over uh, four, uh, I mean, it just depends on what, what's in the denominator. We had said B equal to one here. Um, so differentiation is definitely the way to go. Uh, if you are a firm trying to compete in uh, a market that has homogenous goods and in price, um, and that's why firms spend a lot to differentiate their products, whether that's in terms of, um, you know, characteristics, advertising, brand, etc. cetera. 